Hello everyone and welcome back to Classic Comics. Now it's been known for some time that the CW network was up for sale as Discovery wanted to be rid of the network, which is a financial drain. Well, the CW has uh, finally been sold, or rather given away. You see, the CW was about $100 million in debt, and according to Warner Brothers, the network was never profitable. Now, you can take them at their word, but large studios will often claim that films or TV shows even ones that are popular aren't profitable and aren't making money. Now, why would they do that? Well, maybe it's because they have some sort of profit sharing arrangement with say the distributor or maybe with another studio or perhaps with some of the stars in the show and they don't wanna share the money. So they try to pretend that the thing didn't make any money in the first place. In any case, it doesn't surprise me that the CW wasn't making money. The CW has pretty much always been aiming at young viewers, particularly young female viewers. Most of their shows are just soap operas dressed up with some other elements to give them extra appeal, whether that's vampires or superheroes or whatever. So it's not a great surprise that Warner Brothers and Paramount wanted to be rid of it. Now, what is surprising is that an American television network was sold for zero dollars. That's right, WB and Paramount basically gave a TV network away for nothing, with the caveat that Nexstar, that's the new majority owner of the CW, would have to assume responsibility for the CW's massive debt. They're in debt to about the tune of around $100 million. Yet another example of David Zaslav and Discovery Cleaning House to get Warner Brothers finances back in order. So, uh, you know, let's just take a look at this, shall we? The CW's parent companies put it up for adoption in teen drama twist. Riddle me this, Batwoman. How do you create a network with some of the most popular, viral, influential shows among the coveted demographic of young people and fail to make a profit off of it? By being an executive at Viacom, CBS, and Warner Media, apparently. The corporate owners of the CW are looking to sell a network which was formed in 2006. CEO Mark Pedowitz confirmed that the parent companies are exploring opportunities in an internal memo seen by The Hollywood Reporter. The network has, quote, never been profitable since its formation, unquote. Apparently, the CW earned a bulk of its revenue from international sales and a streaming deal with Netflix that made shows like Riverdale explode in popularity. This deal ended in 2019 when CBS Studios and Warner Brothers TV divested streaming rights to their respective streaming platforms, Paramount Plus and HBO Max. And I guess since then, the shows plummeted in popularity and aren't as successful now. So CW's long rumored sale finally a reality. After months of speculation and cancellations, Warner Brothers, Discovery, and Paramount sold the majority of the CW stakes to another media company. The CW has officially been sold to Nexstar, marking the end of an era for network television. The Hollywood Reporter confirmed that a deal between network co-owners Warner Brothers TV and CBS Studios was made with the Texas-based media conglomerate. According to the arrangement, 75% of network stakes will go to Nexstar, while original parent companies Warner Brothers Discovery and Paramount will each retain 12.5% uh, each. Original shows are still being produced for the CW, notably the upcoming Supernatural and Walker prequels, The Winchesters and Walker Independence. Although the CW runs popular shows like Riverdale, Supernatural, and the series in the Arrowverse, it has reportedly been unprofitable from day one. The CW is reportedly not profitable despite its track record of successful long-running series. The television network started its life in 2006 following the elimination of the WB and UPN, remember those? Both of which were created in 1995. After the merger, the CW remained committed to creating youth-oriented programming. Although some of its shows are notorious flops, including their remake of the film Frequency, they have scored some major wins with long-running series like Supernatural and the modernized Archie comic series Riverdale, which was currently airing season six. 
The CW is also home to the Arrowverse, the interconnected universe of series based on DC Comics heroes. That includes The Flash, Supergirl, Black Lightning, and, of course, Arrow. Now, how can Nexstar buy the CW for precisely zero dollars? It feels like Nexstar has been flirting with the CW for longer than some of the broadcast network's viewers have been alive. The acquisition, which two individuals told IndieWire is likely to close next week after the 4th of July holiday, will cost Nexstar all of zero dollars for 75% of the CW. Pretty sweet deal, right? It becomes a little more sour when factoring in the CW's current losses, which sources who spoke with the Wall Street Journal, the publication that first reported details on this round of negotiations, said could exceed $100 million. But that's the burden Nexstar would be taking on, and the relief for the respective balance sheets of current CW partners Warner Brothers Discovery and Paramount Global. Local TV giant Nexstar seals deal to buy 75% stake in the CW, reshaping broadcast landscape. The broadcast network currently run as a joint venture between Warner Brothers Discovery's Warner Brothers TV and Paramount's Global CBS Studios is selling a 75% stake to the local broadcast giant Nexstar. Paramount and Warner Brothers Discovery will retain 12.5% stake in the venture. Yeah, so this doesn't surprise me. I've often wondered if the Arrowverse shows were making money. I assumed they were because, well, they kept making them and making more of them, but now we know that they really weren't. Again, this isn't surprising to me. So back in the day, superhero shows generally had small casts. I assume this was due to the expense of superhero shows. Shows of this sort need special costumes, often special sets, extra stunt personnel, especially if one of the characters can fly. On top of that, there are the digital effects. All of this is going to make a superhero show expensive which is why they used to be pretty rare. The Adventures of Superman in the 50s had a cast of four actors. Superman, Lois, Jimmy Olsen, and Perry White, and that was it. Batman had Batman and Robin, and then there was also Alfred, Commissioner Gordon, and Chief O'Hara, and, and then they had, in the early seasons, they had Aunt Harriet, and then in the later season, they had Batgirl. But they didn't even appear in all the episodes. You know, really, only Batman and Robin were in every episode. Wonder Woman had uh, Wonder Woman and Steve Trevor, and that was pretty much it. The old Flash show from the 90s had The Flash, and Tina McGee, and Barry's friend Julio, who worked in the crime lab with him, and that was it. Now, I was ready to blame this on Smallville. It seemed like the first superhero show that had a large cast and tried turning the show into a soap opera. But upon review, it seems like it was actually really Lois and Clark that kind of set the precedent for having a larger cast and making the show more of a soap opera about the relationships and who's who's sleeping with whom, who's upset with whom, who's keeping secrets from whom, than fighting villains and stopping crimes. But Smallville definitely took that a step further with a regular cast of around eight to 10 people and constant subplots involving the cast's romantic relationships. The question is, how long can the CW continue to produce superhero shows with large casts like this? It seems like something has got to give, and maybe the cancellation of multiple CW shows means that shows of this sort will either be pared down to be less expensive or just canceled altogether. Let me know what you think in the comments. Will superhero shows have smaller casts going forward, or will we just see fewer of them, or maybe both? Also, please do like this video. And please sub to the channel and hit the bell for notifications, and I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching.